So we basically just want to hear and share your experience, you know, over time, setting up the OCDS portal in about how many states? Is it up to 10? Uh, no. I think okay. currently we've, we've worked with about six states there about. Oh, yeah, six. Wow. Yeah. So six is actually a good number to be able to tell, you know, what the common challenges are, what the uh, common recommendations are. Now, this is specific to the OCDS portal because I know you've mm. been instrumental in the entire OCDS process, at least for Kaduna State. Um, yeah. The setting up of the PPA is more like a government initi initiative. I know you've worked with OCP to ensure that mm. these portals are integrated in the whole public pro procurement setup. So Again, just yeah. your ex your experience, you know, working with these six states, setting up the OCDS, how would you say it has been over time? Mm, that, that's a, it's an interesting um, question. Um, but I'll say um, above everything, uh, I would just say that it has been a learning experience. Um, for me uh, and for the organization as well. Um, as you are aware, Cardona State was the, was the first state in, in Nigeria that we started working with uh, and so, supporting to implement the OCDS. So there was a lot of um, learning that came with it. Uh, but I guess, I can also say that um, working with all the several states that we've also worked with, um, the experience has been has been quite different, and it also uh, and it depends on one um, the level of preparedness that the state has uh, in terms of what kinds of infrastructure they have put in place, uh, you know, for to support these um, OCS systems that we are trying to build. Um, and aside, you know, having that infrastructure on the ground, uh, it's also about uh, what kinds of uh, motivation they have to not only kickstart, keep it running, and um, you know, ensure that we have, you know, ensure that we're meeting the goals that we collectively um, set out together. And maybe I can just speak more about my experience uh, with um, Cardinal State, uh, and then uh, maybe if there are any differences from from what we've also experienced in, in other states, I, I would be sure to point them out. Um, okay. As you are aware, with Cardinal State, uh, we we started off the OCDS conversation sometime in. Uh, 2017, and this this conversation started at the point where um, Cardinal State was signing off to um, the OGP, and um, also committing to um, signing off to the um, OCDS standards. So there was already that uh, level of commitment from the states uh, and um, level of willingness to be able to. Uh, work with us, uh, provide us with the um, right um, resources, um, with the right level of support um, that we needed to be able to, um, you know, to be able to implement this OCDS. Uh, one thing that I would say for sure is, and, I, and I've learned this over time, is that um, and I, I think it even took me a bit of time to even, you know, to, to, to get to this point of uh, realization. But um, the OCS being a, a system or, you know, a, a digital system is supposed to enhance what the state is already doing, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it doesn't necessarily come and, like, um, you know, um, what would I say? It doesn't necessarily come and act as that 
change agent that you would expect it to be. Um, of course, the OCDS, okay. the, o, the OCDS has requirements to say that for you to be able to um, say you are, you are fully you know, implementing open contracting, that means you, know, you need to do A, B, C, D. Uh, but then again, um, the OCDS is about publishing um, contracting data. Right. So, so it's sort of like a byproduct of the public procurement uh, process. And if the public procurement system, if, if the public procurement process uh, within the state is not, not fixed, is not you know up to a certain standard, then um, it's going to make it quite difficult to implement open contracting. And even if you do, um, you might still find it difficult to be able to reap, you know, some of the benefits of um, open contracting as, you know, we, we understand it to be. So that's why I said that it's very important and, and it also defines the experience that um, states have some, um, some sort of structure laid down to be able to um, fully implement these systems. Uh, one of those systems or, or one of those structures is, like you said, having the Public Procurement Act. Uh, and um, you also would know that um, the Public Procurement Act was already um, set up, was already passed and was in use. In fact, this was the act that established um, the Public Procurement Authority in Kaduna. Uh, which is the yeah. Uh, yeah. sort of the leading agency in, in implementing open contracting. So, if that law was not passed, um, there would be no agency, and if there was no agency, uh, there would be no, nobody who would, you know, take on this process, lead the process, and uh, make it um, possible for us to be able to implement um, this system. Uh, and let's the you know, from this research that PPDC also did recently, one of the things that we uh, we had found out was that whilst we, um, you know, whilst there's that push for, you know, things like um, localizing the Freedom of Information Act um, so as to make information more accessible, we also found out that the Public Procurement Act had already, you know, talked about um, um, government agencies making their data available, accessible, and um, ensuring that um, citizens or all stakeholders have access to it. And which is the most important, you know, part of, yeah. in, of this OCDS system because OC, the OCDS, what it, it eventually did was to say, uh, whilst you are making your data accessible, whilst you are, whilst you are making it available, um, you should try to put it in this format. Um, you should put it, uh, you know, on through through a digital platform where everybody can access. Um, these are the fields that you should ensure should be available. So, all of those things, yeah, the OCDS um, sort of like make, tries to make sense of all of the data that is published by linking it. But the main work um, started off from when, um, you know, Cardinal State signed up to, uh, to the OGP. OGP. When the, yes, when they also, um, you know, did the uh, Public Procurement Act as well. Yeah. So, so those two things now you will say are maybe like, um, how will I put that? How, what was I call them? Drivers. Yes. To the OCDS portal. Yes. Um, so interestingly, um, like you said, yes, the, there are drivers. At the time, as of 2017, when we started off uh, supporting states to um, to sign up to open contracting, one of the one, one, one of the one of the punchlines that we that we used at that time to get their buying was to let them know that um, first of all, we at PPDC were um, providing the service um, at no cost, and also um, 
it, it's sort of like it meets with the uh, open open government partnership um, commitments that that the states had signed up to. Uh, yes. But but more recently, we found out that um, as as an offshoot of the OGP, uh, which was um, which World Bank is one of the uh, major um, stakeholders, they, they 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 began to think about ways that they can ensure that more people are not only signing up to the OGP but meeting up with the uh, with with this commitment, and that's when they came up with the. Um, uh, with the SIFTAS, SIFTAS program, uh, I'm trying yeah. to the the uh, what it fully stands for S F T S C A S. Fiscal transparency, mm-hmm. accountability, and sustain sustainability Mobility. program. Uh, program, yes. Thank you. Um, so, and what this program essentially did was to begin to. Um, to, to create incentives for states to um, not only sign up to things like open contracting, uh, but also you know, uh, push states to be able to um, you know, do, do, do the work. So we in essence is um, publishing data on the portals, ensuring that um, data is available on the portal, especially within the pilot um, sectors that the program had mapped out, which were health, education, and um, workers. So yes. this, this also um, sectors has been in uh, in the works for I think they are in their fourth year now, and yes. this, it has also become a very critical driver because. Um, the incentives for implementing open contracting uh, and other um, parts of this program where, you know, being able to access um, funds from the World Bank, uh, funds which are more like um, grants uh, where they, you know, they give to the state to implement projects uh, and not like loans where they have to pay back. So states yeah. knowing that you know, those kinds of uh, monies were available, uh, this then became one of the major drivers for, um, you know, for for implementing uh, open contracting. And not to say that other states have not also been trying to um, implement this um, open contracting, you know, for the reasons of trying to. And be more open and be more accountable as well. But this has also, the SIFTAS has been a very critical um, player in ensuring that states are signing up and publishing data um, on the OCDS portals. Which I think was going to take me to my next point, but it, it, it mm. seemed like you had already started touching on it. Now, mm. you said you were letting the states, at least the ones you have worked with, understand that this was without charge, it was FOC, yeah. free of charge. Yeah. So how come um, not every state is jumping on that offer? Have you been able to, uh, to approach every state or are you working to select particular states? Like I will say for something that's interesting and something that, um, um, something that is adding to one of the SIFTAS DLI, I mm. would have assumed that every state should be jumping on the offer. So what yeah. has been your experience trying to get states to jump so on I the think, offer? Yeah, so 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 what I would say is that um, I'll start off by saying that, first of all, we know that um, Nigeria has a culture of um, secrecy, um, which started a long time ago, right from when we um, re- re- regained our, our democracy. Um, and, and if we even look at the history of uh, public procurement in Nigeria and how it came to be, mm. the milestones, you would see that up to, um, up to before 2007, when 
um, the public the public procurement act was passed at the um, national level. Um, yeah. Citizens um, did not even understand the concept of um, public procurement or how it is that um, goods and services from the government came to be. Um, so, so, so what we are seeing right now is a is sort of like a culture shift from when um, the government used to um, two people would sit down in a room, um, think about projects to do, um, monies would be disbursed to certain people to implement projects, and um, whether it was done or not, uh, well, the citizens were the ones who had to pay for it. Right, so we, we we gradually started moving from that level to the point where uh, public procurement is beginning to have more structure. Um, but then, even though this structure exists, hello, let's lie there. Yes, I'm here. I was disconnected for some seconds, but I'm back. Oh, can you okay. hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm yeah. actually back. Just disconnected and reconnected. Okay. So I was just saying that even though this, um, even though this culture shift is in existence, yes. Um, yes. We, we have also seen, and, and this is research-based, that um, the private sector are, are more accustomed to um, an informal method of uh, public procurement where um, they, they gain access to contracts through different forms of uh, bribery and corruption that involves um, civil servants, involves um, executives at the MDA level and, and up to um, high levels of, uh, of the government. And because of that level of... Yeah. Indictment. Um, people who are, you know, within these circles are, are likely not to uh, want to have certain information, especially contracting information, made available, um, because this would then be become, um, you know, evidence or become um, what people can use to take action against them. So, be, because of that, and because up to you now, we still have that kind of um, we still have that kind of system of uh, procurement still happening in Nigeria. It has become, you know, it's quite difficult for um, for government to be able to easily put out um, contracting information, knowing fully well uh, of all the bribery and corruption that has on that that is happening within um, this contracting space. So that is why you would see that even though um, PPDC is providing, providing this service um, free of charge, and even though they are, um, there are also incentives from the World Bank, um, from you know, technical support, um, these grants and all of that available, um, states are still not willing to sign up because um, a lot of them, when they compare the uh, what they could potentially be gaining from um, carrying out shady deals and also from hiding their um, from hiding you know the, their acts they would rather you know not have that information made available even though uh, some of these um, uh, incentives exist so it means the incentives they are Grant. Hello, Leslie. I think I lost, I lost you for a sec. Okay, I know. I was asked. I was asking. I said, is it possible to say? Is it okay to say that maybe why um, most of these government um, authorities are not jumping on your offer and that is offering the OCDS portal free of charge? Is it okay to say that what they are getting from their acts 
whatever system they are, they are using now is not up to what they will gain from the SIFTAS grant. Hello? Yeah, hello, Leslie. Yeah, can you hear me now? I can hear you now. I think my internet is also a bit unstable. Uh, but I didn't, I didn't okay. get the last question. Okay, so my last question was, is it okay to say that what these authorities, the ones who have refused to sign into now, is it okay to say that the SIFTAS grant will not give them as much as what they are getting from their act? Because like you said, look at it from two ways. If you adopt the OCDS portal, it is a plus to the World Bank SIFTAS program. But some states would prefer not to adopt the OCDS portal and stick to the old ways of doing things. So it means they're actually getting more from the old way of doing things than they would from the SIFTAS grant. Yeah, it might not necessarily be more, but it's the fact that um, monies received from the SIFTAS grant are uh, you know, for the state to spend the state, um, yeah. projects, whereas money is gotten through uh, through bad doors, uh, through bribery, through corruption, um, goes directly to the bank accounts of uh, individu individuals that are participating in these sorts of acts, and yeah. who also happen to be um, in in the positions of authority to make decisions about whether to uh, sign up to some of these um, reforms or not. Okay, so I want to also ask, and you don't have, have to mention any states, but has there been a case of approaching a state with this offer free of charge and the state rejecting it or, you know, putting you on hold or suspension or something? Yeah, more like it's it's not it's not really a um it's not hello it's not really it's a thing of rejection um, frustrating okay. process uh for instance there was a state yes. um there was a state that we started off with because how the the process would usually do is to uh first of all um get talking to people within the state um introduce the OCDS, um, introduce the entire concept, um, showcase what we have done in other states or with other government agencies. And then uh, we'll work together to put together um, a work plan um, and sort of just draw out the goals that we want to achieve, when we want to achieve all of that. And once we have an agreement, we we'll usually sign um, an MOU or at least sign an, an, an agreement to say that these are the working conditions. Um, so there's a state where we had gotten to the level where we signed an agreement. Um, and then it was just a matter of, uh, as the agreement was signed, uh, for us to begin taking the next steps, um, you know, in terms of implementing um, the OCDS and at that point we couldn't um, get any form of responses uh, from the state from individuals and that was just how we left it so it, it, <laughs> yeah, so it's not them outrightly saying oh no we're, we're not interested in this but they would then say um, yeah we might be interested we'll get back to you um, sort of like when you're applying for a job and um, the employer doesn't really find interest in you. Yeah, and doesn't want to come out to just tell you to exactly. complain. Yeah. yeah. But again, um, just, you know, we have a couple of people who have joined and I'm happy to have everyone um, on the call. Um, like I said, the recording will be widely shared. So in case you have missed anything, I think you can always go back to the recording and hear what we had talked about, but what exactly do you offer these states, these six states that you are working with now, you know, just so that we know when you say, you know, you showcase the work you have done with other states to maybe um, uh, prospecting states, 
Mm. What exactly do you show them or what exactly have you done with the states? For example, Kaduna mm. that you have worked with in China Pass and you are still working with, what, what service do you exactly offer? Okay, so, um, so like I mentioned earlier, when we talk about implementing open contracting, um, it's basically um, saying that um, a state or a government institution is deciding to um, openly share contracting information, um, you know, to, to citizens or to stakeholders. Uh, so, so that would mean, um, first of all, developing a, a central system where um, contracting information from the um, planning stage uh, up until the point of implementation is published, um, ensuring that uh, there is a system within um, there is a system within these government agencies to be able to collect this data. Um, let's as you be aware, uh, a lot of um, government agencies in Nigeria um, up until recently have been practicing the manual method of procurement where everything is done on paper and um, filed and kept in, 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 a, um, in a locker somewhere. And <laughs> And um, now open contracting is, is, a, is a digital system. So we essentially work with these states to first of all, um, collect this data, um, this data that they have from the past, uh, convert it um, to soft copies, um, upload on the uh, open contracting um, um, portal. Now, something very interesting about the open contracting data standard, and, and I'll give you some context to it, is um, it links up data across different stages. Now, the reason why this is important, or maybe you might not really know the importance of this, is that at a certain stage when um, we at PPDC started um, doing contract monitoring, which is essentially looking through contracts that have been awarded and ensuring um, ensuring that they are implemented um, in accordance with the agreements that, that, that were done. We found out that if, for instance, you are looking for a contract on um, construction of a um, school, a primary school in your community, and you go to the implementing agency and you ask, um, please, can I get details of um, the needs assessment that was done um, that led to this contract being awarded, um, they will tell you, oh, um, go to the planning department. And uh, when you go to ask about details of the, um, the number of people who, who submitted um, bids or tenders um, for the project, um, they would probably tell you to go to the procurement department. And uh, when you are looking for information on uh, how much has been paid to the contractor up to date, they would most likely tell you to go to a different uh, government institution, uh, most likely Ministry of Finance, uh, to get yeah, that kind of information. Of finance. Yes. Yeah. So, um, so what, what makes the OCGS unique is that it sort of, it, it creates a, a, a unique link between um, the different stages of a contract um, across board. So with one unique identifier, you can easily pull up um, information of a particular project at the tender stage, at the award stage, um, and at the implementation uh, stage. So this now simplifies mm -hmm. and sort of makes sense of the data that, that is available. So, um, in, all, in, in all supporting the state to implement open contracting, what we also do is to um, collect this data from the different um, stages, from the different locations, put them together, assign a unique identifier across the stage, and then um, upload it uh, on the portal so that anybody who is looking for uh, details of 
a particular project can easily pull up um, this data. And what we also do is to um, create access points at the different um, uh, ministries, departments, and agencies, different bodies of government, so that um, at each and everybody's convenience, they can continue to upload data as the procurement goes. So it's not just about waiting um, to the final stage where all the procurement has been carried out, um, all the stages have been completed before the project is, uh, is uploaded. But um, with this open contracting um, data standard, uh, as soon as, because a project at its inception is given a unique identifier, whatever um, actions happen as a part of that process is easily linked um, to this, to this uh, unique identifier. And any user from anywhere can easily pull up um, any data that is related to that particular uh, project. So our work usually um, entails, um, first of all, training the staff of the government agencies because open contracting is a fairly new uh, concept. I'm training them on the open con on the concept of open contracting. I'm training them on on the data standard itself because the data standard is an is, is an international um, standard that, that was created by um, stakeholders from different countries. So some things that exist in the standard might not necessarily uh, be the same as what we have at the um, at the Nigerian or the uh, subnational context. So it is also our duty to sort of localize um, those fields, localize the standard in a way that suits the procurement system of what the state or what the government is, is practicing. So we do that um, and we usually are responsible because of our uh, technical expertise. We usually develop this um, online system um, by, you know, we, we develop a front end where um, citizens can access um, the data. We also develop a back end where people from the government side can upload this data. And once we do that, we do trainings for, um, for both uh, state and non-state actors. And then a lot of times after we have handed over these systems to the government, we also um, take on the duty of providing sort of like a a light support um, or post, uh, post deployment support to the state where um, it, at points where they have issues and um, where, where, where there are things that they don't understand, uh, we come in uh, try to figure it out, try to um, support them. And then sometimes when those states do not yet have the technical um, expertise to be able to update the system and the system needs to be updated, they usually uh, would request for us to come and support. So that's um, typically what, you know, what our, our services entails. Okay, so you build this platform from scratch. It's not like there's a template that you just adopt and, you know, fill in this detail. You build it yourself from scratch. Uh, yeah, so, so, after building for the first um, two states, uh, we sort of created like a, a, a reusable model where uh, we, whichever okay. state we're, we're supporting, we don't necessarily build from scratch, but it's sort of like just customizing yeah, yeah. the features to meet, um, you know, the state's peculiarities in terms of their processes and the kinds oh, of yeah. that we're collecting. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's interesting. So before I go to like the common challenges and maybe you um, just mention the six states, mm -hmm. I wanted to know, because I know there was an event I missed last week by OCP and it was talking about legislating the OCDS or so. Mm -hmm. um, is there any plan? Because again, like the system in Kaduna where I am is actually... Um, it's a bit, it's a bit of a challenge sometimes when you are looking for some information, you know, 
we've actually discussed this before. We have the issues of incomplete data. In fact, mm-hmm. there was a spreadsheet we down, I downloaded recently and I shared with a couple of guys, you know, were in the middle and I called them and said, hey, come and see what do you think should be done to this person? Someone uploaded a blank Excel spreadsheet mm. on, um, I think, the e-procurement or the Cardinal State uh, portal that was linked to the OCDS. Blank. Mm. When I mean blank, it was blank, nothing. Mm. We looked at it. I think there were like three sheets open and they were all blank. So legislation, any move so far? Because again, this system will go a long way to check the imbalances in the procurement system, in the public procurement system. And I guarantee you, if no one is really issuing out any penalties for yeah. not you know, doing the right things, people can just say, okay, yes, hey, unlike the state that said, um, or that we're trying to, you know, play around with you. Some can say, hey, yeah, why not? Come on board. We accept it. You know, like I always say in Kaduna, and they're already um, trying to tag me as Mr. Ticking the Box because I always say this. Some of these things are done just to tick the boxes. And once the box is ticked, oh, yeah, come. We are one of the states that have signed, you know, the OCDS and we are using it but they don't, again, sustain it. So are there any plans for mm. legislation around the OCDS portal? Because I know there's the Public Pro- Procurement Act, but as at the time, I don't think the OCDS was captured, if mm. I'm not mistaken. So any plans for legislation? Yeah, so uh, in terms of plans for legislation, I, I, I might not necessarily be in the position to speak um, but what I can say is that um, legislation is very, very critical. Um, currently, in, in terms of um, legislation, um, for most states, what we have as the backbone for, um, for, you know, for implementing open contracting is usually the Public Procurement Act. And um, if you look at the act and the section where it talks about uh, publishing data, especially um, even at the federal level, it only says that um, that government agencies are supposed to publish data, or sorry, they are supposed to submit their data to um, to the public procurement authorities or to the uh, regulatory bodies, which is usually the uh, the Bureau of Public Procurement Authorities, um, at least three, rather at most three months after the end of the financial year. And then um, it also also says that government uh, institutions are supposed to keep um, physical and digital copies of all aspects of procurement for a period of at least um, 10 years. after the procurement has happened. So, so even though this, this, um, this Public Procurement Act, and then of course the uh, Freedom of Information Act, which is a federal um, law that talks about um, the power of citizens to, to gain um, access to um, information that is classified as uh, public information. And it also talks about um, um, government bodies proactively putting out that information and it gives in details um, some of the um, information that is considered as uh, public uh, public information and the number of days or the structure in which the, the, the information should be made available, right? So, so these laws definitely um, support um, open contracting but then again, um, just like the way I've said it, that they are a bit vague in terms of how it mandates um, government agencies to put out information. For instance, the open contracting, yeah. um, the, like I said earlier, the open contracting data standard um, covers um, procurement. The whole the, 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 the entire chain from the beginning to the ending. 
uh, and defines the fields that make up this uh, public, uh, you know, that make up this open contracting um, data. Now, because these kinds, um, this existing le legislature do, do not necessarily mandate um, government agencies to say you must put out um, ABCD information, you must put it out as soon as possible and all of that. It then sort of leaves room for government agencies to be able to pick and choose what kinds of data they are putting out. Uh, and just like you said, they do this to meet sometimes the, the, the minimum standards for, for to, to either meet transparency or you know, the, the minimum standards to meet uh, some of the commitments that, um, that the states have signed up to. And that's why you can go on, on these portals and see that um, the quality of the data that is put out there is very poor um, because of um, the format the data is put out in, uh, the, the gaps that exist in the data to the point that uh, users cannot, cannot make sense of it. So, um, like I said, exactly. open contracting is still sort of like a, a new field. Um, stakeholders are learning, um, governments are learning from the process, um, users of the data are learning from the process. And one of the learnings that are coming out is the fact that um, the data that is, uh, is available now is not enough. And um, the only way to ensure that the that um, governments improve their, their thresholds for uh, publishing of data is by, um, you know, making amendments to available uh, laws or, well or developing new laws that ensure that, uh, well you know, that spells out which, which data should be made available, how it should be made, made available and, and, and all of that. So, uh, uh, so we are PPDC because uh, we are kind of like the, the, the leading organizations, you know, in open contracting implementation in, in, uh, in, in Nigeria. We have been um, also trying to push for these kinds of um, legislations and ensuring that um, governments begin to move beyond uh, what the level of uh, implementation they have now to the point where, um, you know, there's data that of, uh, and, and we are doing that through trying to ensure that we have the, the, the right laws uh, and uh, policies that are guiding um, how open contracting is being implemented. Yeah, you're, so you're already touching on, you know, what I was saying will be the next question, and that's on the common challenges. Yeah. But again, you can just maybe summarize what you think are the common challenges across the six states that you are currently working with. Hmm. So, yeah, I think, so what do um, you see are the common challenges? I think one of the places where we always use as a starting point is... Uh, political will, um, and which is yeah. essentially um, the politicians or, or uh, members of the government at the high level buying into um, you know, some of these um, commitments or wanting to ensure that they are um, implementing some of these reforms. Uh, but, but, but more recently, we've begun to see that um, aside from having commitment at that um, from the political class and at that high level, um, there is also a challenge of getting commitment at a, at a more uh, primary and, and secondary level, um, talking about the um, civil servants who's duty on a day-to-day -day basis it is to make this um, data available. And this can also be traced to, um, to, like I said in the beginning, this culture that exists in Nigeria about, um, you know, not wanting to be transparent, um, 
not wanting to be held accountable, um, and just also in the way that uh, public procurement is, is being uh, practiced. And um, also relating, relating to that is also the fact that um, there is currently a very, very high level of um, corruption uh, in, in the public procurement process across different levels of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So um, because of the fact that that sort of corruption exists that has a very tight grip on the public procurement system, it is difficult to get people who are um, very well uh, part of this corrupt system to begin to move from, you know, from the system that they are currently practicing to um, to a system where um, there is no corruption uh, and therefore um, information can be made available. Um, in the research that we did in 2018, we found out that, um, in fact, for private sector, um, it was of the opinion that um, they, the and they told us that um, it is it is surer for them to go through this informal method of procurement to access contracts rather than going through the formal contracts because um, it gave more guarantee. It, it's your money talking. So yeah, with money you're able to buy contracts, you're able to um, pay bribes to public officials. And, and um, private sector, yes, and accessing contracts will not be left to chance. Um, whereas, mm. um, you know, going to be the formal method of procurement, um, is left for you know, it's, it's still left for people to decide whether a, a um, procurement, whether a contract should be awarded to a certain um, contractor or not. So, because these kinds of issues exist. Um, affect the public procurement system itself. Uh, it is then difficult for the public procurement system to be able to um, bring out meaningful data that can then be published and um, for us to say that we are practicing uh, open contracting. Uh, but, but aside that, we also have things like um, the lack of um, technical capacity um, for, uh, you know, for, for governments, uh, for civil servants to be able to participate or to be able to properly implement open contracting. Uh, from, a, from my experience, I've seen a lot of government agencies who are expected to, um, who are so expected to keep, um, who are expected to keep digital copies of uh, procurement data. Um, who do not have computers within those government agencies. They do not have um, reliable internet. They do not have um, even the, the skill set to be able to make use of computers or to be able to um, publish this, make use of these systems to publish data um, on, on the open contracting system. So I think there is a lot of... Um, a lot of work that we see that needs to be done. And even though I might not be speaking to all of them, but most of them can, can be linked to uh, some of these examples that I've given. Yeah, the orientation, capacity building, those are very key you know, things that we need to help this mm -hmm. process achieve its yeah. goals. So it's, um, I think before we open the floor for questions, if Eli and um, SCN have any questions, can you do us the favor of mentioning the six states that you are currently working with? I know Kaduna, my state, is actually one of them. Okay, so we're working with um, Kaduna State, Ekiti State, um, Anambra State, Abia State, um, What's the last one? Um, Emo State currently. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Like you have a lot of states from from the east. Yeah, it seems uh, <laughs> our 
um, Eastern brothers are not trying to to come last in this race for 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 some of these reforms. So, so they have actually been. Um, they have, in fact, amongst these states, those states uh, from the east have been one of the states that have been really trying to push to ensure that um, that we are available to them to to support them to 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 implement this system. But I also like to yeah. mention that aside from this six so states, you said Akwai bomb too, Abi? Uh, no, I, Akwai bomb currently and. We are not supporting them uh, for open okay, So please, can you just run through this? Yeah. So I was, I was just about. Sorry, I was about to mention that uh, besides these um, six states that I'm going to mention again, there are other states that yeah. are implementing open contracting, um, but not with the support of PPDC. PPDC. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yes. Uh, but the six states I mentioned are Kaduna State, um, Anambra State, Abia State, Imo State, Ekiti State. Oh, yeah, and um, Kogi State. So there are actually seven of them. Kogi. Okay, no, are there seven? Yes. Come again. Let's see. Sure. Yeah. You Kaduna State. Kaduna State. Kaduna. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, Anambra State. Abia State, um, Imo, um, Ekiti, Kogi. So that's seven. And we also have Adamawa State, which, so which is actually eight. So it's eight states that we are currently supporting. Okay. So the other states, yeah. uh, um, the other states have the portals, but not being supported by PPDC. PPDC, Some of the yes. Other states. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very like, much. Uh, uh, yes. Thank I you, Leslie. It's been a very, very interesting discussion, and you know, um, mm -hmm. again, I'm happy to hear this. This thing we worked together on the last research that PPDC carried out, and you know, we gained some insights into some of these things you have mentioned. But again, I was working for only Kaduna State and mm -hmm. it's interesting to hear what some of the other states are also experiencing. So I don't know if Eli and SCN have questions or would want to say anything on the call. Eli, are you there, SCN? Yeah, hi, it's Eli here in Vancouver, Canada. So I'll admit I don't know a lot about what's happening yeah, at the Nigeria state level. But I, I think it's really interesting that you were able to successfully advocate for the adoption of these, these open platforms around pro procurement, a word I always double on. <laughs> um, I'd like to hear a little bit more about <laughs> how did you successfully um, lobby and, and, and convince the government to adopt this method? Like, what was your approach to getting public adoption for these? Okay, thanks. So, so we, um, so we would usually start off with um, identifying um, sort of like a a, uh, a a prominent for um, either prominent politician or prominent um, civil um, civil servant who we thought that was, uh, first of all, um, already doing work around the kinds of um, things that we wanted to achieve. Uh, and then um, we would also map out the, uh, the kinds of influence that they have um, to be able to um, you know, push for some of these things. So uh, then we would approach them, um, talk to them, and um, from there, once we are able to get their buy-in, um, we, we sort of just use them um, through that process of trying to gain access to other prominent um, politicians or other prominent members of the government. For instance, in 20, uh, 
2014, uh, when we started advocating for the Nigerian government at the federal level to sign up to the open uh, to sign up to open contracting, uh, we found out that the, the Attorney General of the Federation at the time was somebody who was uh, very much interested in um, transparency, very much interested in accountability. Uh, and then we approached him. Uh, we were able to secure a meeting where we did a presentation. Um, uh, you know, just talked about the system itself, uh, what we hope to achieve with it. And then, um, as soon as we got we got the buy-in, uh, the next thing we heard was that the uh, president was also interested. Uh, the Nigerian president was also interested in um, in in the entire. Nigerian um, government at the federal level signing up to this um, to this um, reform. So it is usually about finding um, the, somebody who has access and somebody who aligns with your goals and being able to um, uh, make them to buy in um, into some of these reforms and then uh, trying to support them to be able to uh, push it for adoption at higher levels. Right. So you really took an elite strategy for making this change rather than a grassroots strategy where you had, you know, advocates in the streets, you know, protesting. Mm. Yeah. So um, over time, we've also seen that um, having that grassroots um, alignment is also critical um, because it is one thing, like I was telling Leslie, it is one thing to have the political will at, at the highest level. Um, there is another thing to get buy-in at um, the low levels and the medium levels. So we so we kind of take like a mixed approach where we are uh, first of all trying to get that buy-in at that um, at that high level, and then we begin to also um, source for buy-in at the grassroots level. So this is sort of like creating, uh, supporting the supply side, but also creating demand um, from the grassroots level. So it's sort of like a mixed approach. Thank you. That's helpful. Um, I think there's lots to learn from your successful strategy on this campaign. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Yeah, Essien, you have any questions for our guest? Okay, maybe Essien is not close. Um, so just one last thing, Vishima, I'd like to know if you are already... Okay, okay. I'm trying to with you. Yeah, I'm, I was trying to oh, okay. uh, Yeah, I got some understanding from uh, what is... Uh, he was saying. So I currently don't have any question because um, for, for us here, we're trying to see how we can implement uh, something open, um, similar to the open contract as he was explaining. But uh, from I would try to see how I can link up with him later because he shared some really important insights and uh, see how we can just pick his brain on something. But uh, today was really insightful. I really learned a lot. Uh, I currently don't have any questions. That's Thank you I'm very much. Thank you. So my, um, Vashima, my last point will be to ask you if you have successfully taken advantage of TechSoup um, offers on you know some of the digital tools you use have you um so to be honest i haven't um and before i was invited um to be a guest here i hadn't um heard about um tech soup uh, but it's something that i would definitely love to explore and see um what kinds of uh, features uh, would be helpful for me as a as a tech person as well, and uh, as somebody who is working um, in various communities, it would be nice to see uh, how I can leverage whatever advantages um, TechSoup has to offer. All right, 
Thank you very much. And I'll be happy, and I know Eli also will be happy to make that happen. Once you are ready, we have offers across different digital tools, um, Microsoft, Adobe, Zoom, just name it, and I think we actually have it. So it's been an interesting discussion once again. Thank you, everyone, for coming on the call. Um, like I said, for those who couldn't make it, we'll make the recording available because, again, everybody who listens to this knows that there's a lot to learn and there's a lot to be done, and we are all stakeholders in this together. So we hope to have you come back again, Veshima, or anybody from your team mm. um, to come and throw more light on how we can all successfully be part of implementing the open contracting data standard. So have sure a very great there. night. Absolutely, anytime. Thank anytime. you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Eli. Thank you, Asan. Do enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much. Thanks for hosting this, and we will share the recording later today. Thank you.